Hello, I'm Judy Boati of Hobsa 85. And today I have the pleasure and privilege of sitting down for a chat with one remarkable lady, Mrs. Georgina Edu Nanchi, who is also the immediate past president of Hobsa USA Canada. Hi, Sister Gina. How are you doing today? I'm wonderful and I believe you are too. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for asking. And uh, thank you once again for taking the time to share a part of your journey with us. Um, as far as I know, you work in the um, finance industry. Yes, yes, I do. You do. Okay. So could you tell us a bit more about what you do and if this line of profession was your first choice? Well, you know... <laughs> I can say that it wasn't my first choice. Okay. Um, however, the changes I made worked out for me and I don't regret it a bit. Okay. My background is in public relations. Okay. And my original um, plan was to, you know, uh, proceed to get my master's in business admin. Okay. And then go from there. Okay. But, you know, as um, life's journey has a lot of contours, it didn't work out that way. Yeah. Um, so I decided to, you know, embrace whatever came my way. Um, I had to make that change because of my husband's challenging medical issues okay. at that time. Uh, so I had to put my education on hold and then um, forget about the workforce for some time. But when I was ready, both he and I were able to research. But then there, uh, we realized that the public relations area was not that lucrative. You know, there were some challenges. Uh, I wasn't getting any. So then we looked at um, the finance industry and he pushed me, he was the one who pushed me. To tell you the truth, he was the one who even, um, by the time I realized, because I had my resumes all over, he okay. submitted my resume for, for me. Right. So when I got the call, I didn't know which company called me, mm -hmm. you know? So right. I immediately had to call him and he said, yes, he sent it to this company. Oh. That was it. Yeah, so, you know, um, I decided to, Go, go with the um, financial industry because it was, it looked very, very um, lucrative and stable. Right. And also right. because, you know, we had read about it, we could see that there was um, room to grow despite the challenges because, you know, with finance, it's always changing. Be it the global market, legislature, products, and what have you? You know, you and I know that when um, we started taking our own finance, uh, charge of our own finances, we were writing checks. That's true. But now, yes, but now you don't write checks, you do Zelle. You know, your children will tell you that you are what? Um, dinosaur. You yes. Know. And yeah. they, they will yeah. even ask you what is an ACH. Um, true. You know, to keep them <laughs> and all that. Yeah, so with all the, you know, um, various products i decided i would rather go in to do that and also notice that i had a chance using my public relations skills right yeah because it has it has various various areas it's not only banking you have investments you have research you have you know all kinds of um areas within the financial industry okay so that was why i you know I never regretted going in. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So you combined all of your skills and poured it into banking. Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's interesting. Right. So Sister Gina, what were some of the um, major obstacles you faced while you pursued your professional goals and uh, how did you overcome them? Well, the obstacles were, I will say that, First, because I'm an African, 
Right. A woman. Yes. Yeah. You know, someone with an accent. Sure. Yes. So it was. Um, I will say challenging. It wasn't challenging, but it was a, a you know a, a learning process. So that was <laughs> the first thing, because um, you know you will talk to someone and the person will just look at you and be like, "Huh? What did you just say?" Yeah. You know, it's it's funny because um, they can understand the other minorities. You're right. Mm -hmm. They cannot, and even within Africa, they can understand from Africans, but not. Mm -hmm. That was okay. That was the least of my problems. Sure. Yes. <laughs> that was the least of my problems. Mm -hmm. Um. Another thing was, um, thankfully. Because I am a husband, and we have the training to be confident and to go for whatever goal you set, and to tell yourself that you can do it no matter what. Yes, you set your mind to it. Yes, I was, I was able to. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um. I had to work harder mm -hmm. than others to prove myself all the time always yes but um thankfully my ability to cooperate um and my willingness to share ideas with others yes my helped me a great deal right so, yes yeah because you have to be a team player to be able to survive in those um environments yeah. you're right you're right. So that kind of answers my next question then, because I was going to ask you how your education at Holy Child prepared you for your profession. So you've pretty much answered, but I'm sure you have a lot more to say. Yeah. Um, Holy Child reaffirmed um, the qualities that my parents installed in me. You know, that would be love, compassion, Faith, confidence, honesty, and empathy. Okay. You know, the school gave me the sense of belonging that no matter what your background was, you, you belong there. True. And True. that was very, very um, um, satisfying. Yes. That no matter what, once you work hard, you are okay. So, um, that was one of the things that I thrived on. Mm -hmm. And also um, that there were no barriers that once you set your mind to it, you can, can do it. Them yeah. Okay. That's wonderful. That is everything you've said is true because those are the values that were instilled in us in Holy Child School. Yes. In addition to what our parents instilled in us. Yes, so, right. So Sister Gina, um, how did your family, or how did the support of your family play a part in your professional journey? Um, it was um, basically my husband um, because he was already in management. Okay. So I always had, um, I took him as my, my counselor, <laughs> my okay. management counselor, yes. So anything that happened, I discussed with him. Okay. And um, it worked out very well. Okay. Because there were frustrations, you know. Yes. Um, I'm telling you, there is no way, but I continue to tell everybody that there is no place mm -hmm. that you cannot face, um, you know, challenges, frustrations, and all all that but it's up to you to be able to deal with it yes but at a point i was so frustrated because you know of <laughs> um how do i even put it i don't want to say backbiting but undermining yes no, undermining yes there was a lot of that so i had discussed with him that i wanted to change jobs because as someone a friend of mine had left her company and has gone somewhere. And that person was saying, you know, come along, you're going to get this, 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 that. But then he said, no, 
I don't think it's time for you, you know, this is the time to do it. Right. The time that you would have done it passed you a long time ago. Oops. Okay. Yeah, because it said at a certain age, it's not good for job hopping. Because you have to think about um, benefits. You have to think about your welfare, you know, welfare and everything. Because um, you have to know that you may leave this company for other, but you may be digging yourself, going to face more challenges. True. That may frustrate you. Yes. So in effect, he was telling me that it's better um, to stay with the devil you know <laughs> that the angel no, you do not know. No. Yeah. And um, I did a lot of um, discussion with him in terms of my profession. Okay. Although he was not in finance, mm -hmm. I, you know, not like the actual finance itself, yeah. but the administration, public relations, team management and all that. Yeah. He helped me a great deal. Oh, that's wonderful. That is wonderful. Seems like a really great man and um, many thanks to him and may his gentle soul continue to rest peacefully in Christ. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. For his support, yes ma'am. Right, um, Sister Gina, last but not least, what advice will you give your teenage self today? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know whether uh, this day and age that would sit very well with them, but I think, you know, values are values. Yes. You know, you, I don't think he can water them down. Yes. So I would say that the first advice that I give my, um, my grandkids, my nieces, my nephews, my God's children is that love yourself. Okay. You know yourself. And if you don't love yourself, there is nobody who is going to love you. That's true. It is with loving yourself that you feel, uh, you make yourself vulnerable to others to love you. So that's the first thing. And then um, also be yourself no matter the situation. Be as honest, straightforward, and uh, loving as you can be. Because that takes away the fears of, you know, the yes, the fear of the unknown. And once you are yourself, uh, you know, it, you, you sort of um, put on an armor of confidence, you know, something like that. And um, so that would, no matter what, there have been situations that I have handled that I look back and I say, whoa, how did it happen? But because you accept yourself, you believe in yourself, you can, you know, get along with, that, with very, very little issues. Right. Another um, thing that I would tell them to do is do not think about what people say about you. Yes. You do not have any control over what people say about you. That's true. As long as what, you know, you know that what you are doing, you are faithful about it, you are um, honest, you are, how do I even say it? You do not have any um, ill thoughts about what you are doing, that you are doing the right thing. Whatever anybody says does not matter because you are doing the, what you have to do. And also I try them, I, I tell them to be assertive, mm -hmm. but not aggressive. Sure. Yes. Because, you know, being aggressive uh, means that, you know, you're going to trample over people, but put yourself in that person's shoes, you know? Yes. So be, be assertive, go for whatever you want, and with that, you're also going to win trust. Yes. You know, you're going to win trust. Yes. But if you are aggressive, you will always have to think negatively or work harder. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you have empathy, love, you know, compassion, 
yes. it breathes through life. I'm not saying that there are no obstacles. There are obstacles in life. Yes. There is no, no journey, life journey that you wouldn't have any obstacles. There are obstacles. But when you have positive thinking and love, you know, it trumps everything. It trumps everything. Yeah, right. Thank you. Nuggets of wisdom there. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, I remember, yes, um, I did say last but not least, but I cannot end it without asking you to share a particularly favorite memory um, from your profession. My job? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Let's see. Um, Out, yeah, yeah, the biggest, the biggest one, I'll give you two. Okay. The biggest accomplishment was um, when I was selected as a product owner okay. for a large scale income generating product. Okay. Um, it was for service and acquisition, restructuring and transitioning and all that. And my, it was interesting that my colleague and I are both women, not only women, women of color. Sure. And Africans. <laughs> yep, all of it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, yes. But um, you know, we work so good together that other team team members, I don't, you know, they marvel at how best we work. Yes. You know, is the two of us handling that product? But we don't. You you can hardly hear anything about it right you know, because we work so much together and that has really um taught me a lot of just being you because we don't there is nothing that we do differently from the others right you know communication works a lot you know it works so much if you you are in a setting where there are various people various teams and all you know uh, something like that so we communicate very very well okay and um the last one <laughs> was um when i got this um i led my team to win this award it was not merit award but it was um a gold sneaker award in 2018 Okay. for excellence in foundation in the New Jersey uh, juvenile diabetes, the Rutgers uh, juvenile diabetes walk to cure. And that was the Rutgers um, chapter, right. Rutgers University chapter. Okay. Um, I, I was very excited about it because that was um, the heart of my husband. Oh. Yes, because he, he got diabetes very, at a very young age. So that was his heart. So we adopted it as an annual project for the family. So when I won that and um, they sent the award and everything, they, they first sent it to my job because it was my, the company team right. that won it. But that is one accomplishment that I'm very happy I was able to do that for him. Yeah. Wonderful. Congratulations and well done also for, you know, doing something great in his honor. Yeah. So that's wonderful. All right, Sister Gina, I've enjoyed every bit of this conversation with you and I wish we could just go on and on <laughs> because I've learned so much from you, as I'm sure others will when they listen to this. But uh, thank you once again for availing yourself um keep shining because you thank are you. The inspiration yes yeah. thank you so much judy for having me and um i wish everybody i will say a big thank you to holy child school for giving us that education making us women of substance that we are to the staff and especially to the nuns who traveled from their various countries, leaving their families to come and help uh, educate us. Yes. Yeah, and I wish everybody a happy and uh, 75th anniversary. 
and we have to put our actions working. Actions and not words. Not words. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So, Thank you. Yes, you're Thank very you. welcome. It's been my pleasure. And once Thank again, you. yes, a very happy anniversary to all of my Hobson sisters. <laughs> and um, may God continue to bless and keep us all. Amen. 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 Thank bye you. bye. Yes. Bye bye. bye, -bye. <laughs>